Here we're going to look at the question, what is a p-value? We're going to do one simple calculation, but mainly it is the underlying concept of a p-value in hypothesis testing. So first of all, the p-value is a measure of the strength of the evidence against the null hypothesis, the strength of the evidence that is provided by our sample against the null hypothesis. So the definition here is confusing to some people. Not really super essential necessarily that you understand fully the definition, but it might help a little bit. So here it is. The p-value is the probability of getting the observed value of the test statistic or a value with even greater evidence against the null hypothesis if the null hypothesis is actually true. The probability of getting the observed value of the test statistic or a value with even greater evidence against the null hypothesis if the null hypothesis is actually true. So first of all, it is a probability. And a bit, bit of a mouthful after that, but let's look at one specific case here first. So let's say we've got our standard Z test. We happen at O sigma. Suppose we're sampling from a normally distributed population. We've got the alternative hypothesis here that mu is greater than mu naught. We've got our standard Z statistic here. And we know that under the assumption of sampling from a normally distributed population, if the null hypothesis is true, then this Z statistic has a standard normal distribution. So suppose, for the sake of argument, suppose in, a, in one of our examples, uh, we have a Z value of 2.87, let's say. Suppose, just suppose. Well, here's our standard normal distribution. This Z statistic will have a standard normal distribution in the event the null hypothesis is correct. Now, if we look at our alternative hypothesis here, values in the right tail of this distribution will give evidence against the null in favor of the alternative. If mu is indeed greater than mu naught, we would expect this Z statistic to be large, or tend to be at least larger than a random sample value from the standard normal distribution. So, we get a Z value of 2.87. It's out there somewhere. Our p-value is going to be the probability of getting this value or something even more extreme, something even farther to the right in this setting because our alternative is mu is greater than mu naught. We look at the calculation of a p-value for different hypotheses in another video. But this particular one, this area, you can find that from your standard normal curve in this particular setting by p-value to three decimal places anyway is 0.002. Now, what does that actually mean? Well, in loose terms now, but a very important type of stuff, if our p-value is really, really small, that's going to give us lots of evidence against the null hypothesis, because values way out here in the right tail are going to provide evidence against the null hypothesis and give us evidence that mu is actually greater than mu naught. So, the smaller the p-value, the greater the evidence against the null hypothesis. This is going to be important for us. The smaller the p-value, the greater the evidence against the null hypothesis. Now, if we have a given significance level alpha, we won't always have a given significance level alpha, hence the if we have a given significance level alpha, then we can reject the null hypothesis if our p-value is less than or equal to alpha. So this can be our little cutoff for significance, say. Cutoff for significance. If our p-value is less than or equal to alpha, we can reject the null at the alpha level of significance, or we can say that there is significant evidence against the null hypothesis. If your p-value is greater than alpha, then we do not have significant evidence against the null hypothesis, and we cannot reject the null hypothesis. Now, life is easy if we have a given significance level. But if we don't, and we don't always, then we still have to come up with a reasonable conclusion. But it is not as cut and dried. So if we don't have a given level of significance, we still want to be able to say something reasonable. Now to do so, we might want to think about the distribution of the p-value. And here is the distribution of the p-value under the null hypothesis. If the null hypothesis is actually true, this p-value has a uniform distribution between 0 and 1. And loosely speaking, any value between 0 and 1 is equally likely if the null hypothesis is true. But if the null hypothesis is false, I'm not showing it here, if the null hypothesis is false, we will tend to get p-values that are starting to get closer to zero. How close to zero? Well, that depends on the specifics of the situation. But our distribution will be moved a little bit more towards zero. So when we get p-values that are small, closer to zero, this is providing evidence against the null hypothesis. Now on a very, very loose guideline, very loose guideline, and opinions would differ here. But for me, I'm going to say this. Very rough guideline. If your p-value is less than 0.01, we have very strong evidence against the null hypothesis. If your p-value falls between 0.01 and 0.05, then we st still have strong evidence against the null hypothesis, but it's certainly not overwhelming by any stretch of the imagination. 
And if we take it out a little bit farther, well, between 0.05 and 0.1, eh, we've got a little bit of evidence against the null hypothesis, depending on the problem, etc. But it certainly not, uh, wouldn't be considered in most spots to be very strong. And if your p-value is bigger than 0.1, then typically we think that there's little or no evidence against the null. It could be a little bit, depends on the situation. If we get a p-value close to 0 0.1, 0 0.11, 0 0.12, depends on the situation that we're talking about. But we can start thinking maybe there's a little bit of evidence against the null hypothesis, but certainly not that strong. Once we start getting up into the 0.2s and 0.3s though, uh, and all the way up, then we pretty much say there is no evidence against the null hypothesis.